Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Mosca here again with another beer review for you, as is usual. Um, now for this one we're actually going to head back up towards Aberdeen and we're going to do a beer that's from one of the sort of little outlying villages of Aberdeen and I reviewed one of their beers for you just before Christmas which was the Macbeth Bitter Beer and I really liked that one and in, not, and in honesty I'm not such a great fan of bitter beers but I really did enjoy that one so I'm hoping this one can be just as good. So for this one we're going to revisit the D-Side Brewery and this time we'll have a little look at their Laugh California steam beer and I'm quite looking forward to trying this one for you but it was quite cool actually because when I went when I bought the first of these bottles that I was going to make the videos for that I couldn't find a brewery history so I emailed them and asked them and they actually told me they said oh come and visit our bar the Dusk Bar in Aberdeen and we'll give you one of each of our beers and we'll also give you a nice glass to go with it so they gave me this guy as well which was really cool and I didn't have time unfortunately to review the other two beers that they gave me before I left for Germany so I'm back now and I will be doing the other one after after this just in a little while so really looking forward to actually getting these other reviews done but um, as is usual with my beer reviews I'll take you through the brief history of the brewery tell you a little bit about where the beer comes from and all of that sort of thing but as I always say if you are simply just interested in the tasting of this beer then feel free to go on towards the latter part of the video and you will catch that particular segment and as always the link to the brewery website is in the video description as is the link to my uh, my other D-side beer reviews and there will be more added on in future there and hopefully they bring out some more beers after these two that I can review for you as well. So um, at, so let's get on with the history here. As I've mentioned to you before, there's a lot of new Scottish craft breweries popping up in recent years with the kind of boom that we've had in Scottish craft brewing. And these guys, like I mentioned, are located to ba out in Bankery, just to the west of the city of Aberdeen. But the brewery was founded originally in 2005 as the Hillside Brewery in Lumphanen in Aberdeenshire by the late Rob James. And he moved the brewery to a larger premises in 2008, which was equipped with a 10 by barrel plant and at this point he renamed the brewery the D-Side Brewery. Now Rob actually closed the brewery in 2011 and then it was bought over by Mike who also owns the Dusk Cocktail Bar in Aberdeen. This is a really nice bar actually, it specialises in cocktails and apparently does wine tasting sessions as well. It's a really sort of nice and classy place to go so if you're ever in Aberdeen and looking for a nice place to drink you know go and try some of their cocktails. But in 2012 they employed their current head brewer Dan Griffiths who's a student at the famous Heriot Watt University Brewing Programme and apparently they also ha uh, hired talented sommelier Neil Sturton who acts as the brewery brand ambassador and also as the sales manager for the D-Side Brewery. But very recently they've actually moved into their new premises in Bankery to the southwest of the city of Aberdeen and the steading in is the address for this one is the steading Lockton of Lays Bankery. But with this move they've actually increased their capacity by purchasing five new 1500 litre fermenter conditioning tanks as well. And this beer is actually one of five that the brewery currently produce and this includes the Macbeth which is a bitter beer. They have the Talorkin which is a stout you have this guy here which is the Laugh Californian Steam Beer, you have the Swift which is an American Pale Ale, that one apparently is still to be bottled as well and you also have the Lager Beer and I don't know if they've bottled this one quite yet, I think they actually are in the process of doing that but you, I tried it on tap when I went to visit them in the Dusk Bar and it was a really nice one so hopefully I can review that one for you at a later date but I will review the Talorkin for you in the coming weeks once I get back from the Netherlands and stuff like that but let's get on with the tasting of this guy like I say, quite interested to try another Another beer from the D-Side Brewery. So I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at this. It's quite a simple design actually on the bottle but it's really nicely done. As you can see in the bottom there it says it's a 4.1% beer so it's a 4.1% Californian steam beer and it says brewed in Royal D-Side or handcrafted in Royal D-Side but it's really nicely presented. On the back it has just a little bit of a history of it says the history and it says here steam beer associated with California came from fermenting lager yeast and malt at a much higher temperature than normal dating back to as early as the gold rush this was generally out of necessity due to the lack of available ice and cold water obviously a problem with it being very very hot in California but it looks a really nice beer it says in the description of it light crisp and refreshing with clean herbal and floral flavors so we'll see what this guy comes out as it should hopefully be quite interesting obviously the most well-known kind of steam beer that you have is the anchor steam beer so maybe the guys at the brewery really enjoyed this one and wanted to sort of make their own take on it but let's get it open and see how we get on with the tasting here as you can see I forgot to show you that as well the bottle cap is just plain hopefully at some point they'll actually add this nice little uh, D-side symbol onto the bottle caps there but I don't know how much that costs them to do it hopefully we will see it in the future but let's get this guy open and get or get it out into the glass and see how we got on as you could see there was quite a nice sort of steamy opening to this one so let's get it out and get on with the tasting 
just shugle up the last little bit, see if we can get more of a head on this guy. I'm quite into having a good head on my beers these days because I've been living with the Germans, you know. But um, yeah, so as you can see, it's quite a nice, it's a pretty much really clear, rich golden straw colour. If I put my fingers behind that, you can obviously see that on the camera there. There's a good little bit of kind of big bubbled carbonation just heading up to the top. You've got just under a finger of a kind of frothy white head there. So let's give it a smell and see what it's like. It's actually, it's, it's quite a fruity smelling beer. You can smell just a little bit of kind of bready malt in there, a nice little sweet bready malt, but it is mainly a kind of floral and fruity character that you're getting with this one, in fact, on the aroma. But yeah, really, yeah, really a sort of nice sort of grassy mix between, you've got a nice sort of gardeny and floral grassy character to it. And I think there's some sort of kind of there is really, when you breathe it in a bit more, you are getting that nice underlying sweet bready character to it, I would say. But there's a lot of grassy and sort of, I'd say it's more of a floral than a herbal uh, note on the hops with this guy, to be honest with you. But there's a nice, there is a sort of, un, there is definitely some underlying malt element to this. It's got a nice kind of sweetish, sweet bready caramel in there as well. But it's definitely, if I sugar it up a little bit. Yeah, there's definitely a sweet sort of caramel malt in there when you sugar it up, just a little bit like that. But overall, there is a really nice sort of floral character to this. And I actually can see what they're saying when they say there's a herbal note to it. You do detect that as well. And that mixes in with the kind of bready malts quite well, actually. But really, I would say it's a nice sort of sweet bready malt in there, but there's a good bit of hop too. Like I say, you're getting some grassy and floral aromatic character in there. And I think there is a little bit of kind of citrus citricy fruit in there too. Maybe a little bit lemon, but I think this is, it's mainly, it actually smells mainly like a malty beer, but it mixes, it's a very interesting aroma in fact. I've never quite smelt one like this. So I guess the lesson for this beer is if you do buy one of these, just take a little while and smell the aroma of it. I think it's quite unusual, but it smells quite inviting all the same. And as you can see, the head of this guy has just kind of gone down to be a really thin foamy layer. But let's give it a try and see how we get on. So this is the Laugh Californian Steam Beer from the D-Side Brewery in Bankery. That's quite interesting, actually. It's a lot... It's the aroma makes you think this is going to be quite a a thick beer and honestly it's going to have that sort of cask ale feel to it but it's very very light actually but yeah it's a very very light bodied beer in fact it's actually got a little bit of a lively carbonation to it it's got quite a little bit of a prickle to it But yeah, it's quite interesting, it's quite, it's actually quite grassy and there's just a little bit of that kind of lemon fruity citrus flavour that you're getting in there. But yeah, it's got quite a, the malt base on it's quite interesting, it's quite, um, it's got quite a nice sort of bready element to it, but it's not a white bready element. It's got a little bit of, I think there's a bit of kind of cereal and uh, grainy character mixed into this bread malt base that's there. And there is just a little hint of toffee there as well, but on the aftertaste, it kind of, that malt base comes in on the start and then comes out again on the aftertaste. And it's the sort it's actually quite fresh as well. The fresh part of the beer is coming from the kind of grassy hops and it is mixed quite well with that kind of, um, that sort of kind of gardeny and floral aromatic character that's in here too. One thing I'm actually wondering about this beer is if I've maybe chilled it a bit too much. I think this beer, from my experience of it, would be, it is probably actually quite a bit better as a sort of cask ale than it is uh, being being as chilled as it is. I think you'd get the more malty character coming out a little bit more and it would be, it would kind of mix a little bit more with the hop character. But yeah, it's an interesting one. Like I say, you've got that nice kind of grainy and bready malt character, just a little bit of caramel in it as well and it comes in at the start and then it, it's it's coming out very nicely on the aftertaste actually, it's just sitting in the middle of the tongue there 
but you've got quite a bit of the beer has quite a bit of fresh character and that's due to the sort of hop part of the beer and like I say you're getting a lot of grassy character in there just a little bit of citrus mixing in and there is that kind of floral and aromatic part to it as well I'm not so sure about the kind of herbal character there is a little bit of it there that kind of herbal and, and, and vegetable parts of the hops but I think it's mainly in my opinion it's mainly a grassy character if the herbal character's there I think it's kind of just uh, sort of mixing quite a bit with the mo with the malty part of the beer and I think I, I could see that actually from the tastes I'm getting that the uh, the, the herbal character is beer is a bit more mixed with the malt part of the beer but definitely the main component of this beer is that it's very very fresh and that's down to the sort of grassy and aromatic hops that you're getting there just with a little bit of fruit and as I say the malt base is quite interesting a little bit of cereal and uh, it's an, a nice bready cereal thing just a little hint of caramel I think in there as well but very very faint mainly a sort of grainy bread character to that I would say Definitely, yeah. I can actually now that I, I would stick by that statement. Having had another few sips of this beer, I would definitely say the herbal character that they're saying is in this beer really is mixed in with the malt base, and it mixes quite well with a little bit of kind of cereal bready character. I would say overall for the mouthfeel, I would say this is actually a very light-bodied beer. It is very very light but I think if you like I was saying I think if you serve this at a slightly higher temperature this one is actually quite chilled I think it's maybe about this I, I had it at maybe three or four degrees I think this could maybe be would maybe benefit from being just a little bit warmer than that but overall it's a very light bodied beer actually a little bit of a lively carbonation in there just a nice little prickle to it it's only slightly bitter and it has a slight little hint of dry character as well but overall this is quite a summery beer I would say and you know you could sit and drink a few of these in the summer and just you know and, and just enjoy it in the sun I would say but like I say one of the main things I think with this beer is that it would benefit from being served I don't I think this is a beer you would want more in a cask rather than in a, in a, in a in a, or yeah would you say that in a keg you know these the the wooden cask beers you would want it in that rather than a metal cask I would say because I think you would get a little bit more of the malt character that would kind of complement the hoppy part of the beer just a little bit better but it's a really really nice it's actually a really nice beer and it's a very good summary one I would say so if you want to try some Scottish craft beer you know the D side brewery are a very good brewery to have a little go of I think as for, I've actually only seen their beers in Aberdeen I've never seen them sold further south than that but maybe I'm just not looking in the right places and um, I think I've seen them in Stonehaven and stuff like that but I've never seen them down here in the central belt when I'm down here so hopefully in the next little while they'll get more of their stuff exported and things like that and they'll be they'll continue to grow a lot of the Scottish craft breweries are doing very well but the Deeside Brewery are another one to visit and have it check them out like I say the brewery website is in the video description there along with the Facebook page so follow them and check them out there will be many more good things to come from this brewery. Personally, I think this is a really, really interesting beer. Very good for the summer. And I would I would say as well, I think I, I would prefer the Macbeth to this beer in honesty, but that's just my opinion. You might like this one better than the Macbeth and vice versa. You know, people like different things. But check out the D-Side Brewery anyway. Try a few of their brews. I'll be back with you to review the Talorcan Stout in a little while at some point. And I'll also hopefully get a hold of their other beers, the Swift and the Lager as well. And from what I gather on, when I've looked on Rate Beer and Beer Ad, they actually do produce quite a few other beers as well so hopefully I can get some of those for you and review them in the next little while but try this guy it's an interesting summer beer and I've really enjoyed reviewing this one for you so I will be revisiting the D-Side Brewery at some point in the near future so as always please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff I hope you've enjoyed this beer review of another Scottish craft beer if you're interested in Scottish craft beer reviews, subscribe to the channel and follow me. There will be many more of these to come. But I thank you again for my support, for your support over the 200 or so videos that I've done now. And I will be back soon with more beer reviews. Cheers.